Hey everybody, this is Tankenstein coming to you live and direct from Melbourne or the center of everywhere to bring to you today your complete and comprehensive guide uh, for the weak points on the T95 and the T28 super heavy tank destroyers in the American tech trees. These are ridiculously heavy tank destroyers and as I'm sure everyone who's ever faced them knows, just ridiculous uh, in terms of armament and armor at the front. So I'll be going over quite a bit in this video, including I'll show you a secret weak point that most people do not know about, and it's hiding in plain sight, and it's at the front. Uh, I will be going over what sort of tactics to use against this and the best ammo, again, to use against the T95 and T28. So remember, please like, comment, subscribe. But without further ado, let's get into it so the front of the tank is ridiculously well armored uh, as was its intention this was meant as a breakthrough tank uh, to get through the heaviest defenses of the uh, Siegfried line in Europe and also if we were to invade Japan uh, this would have helped in the invasion if it were produced in mass uh, so it has 305 millimeters of armor even at a flat angle it's still 305 millimeters of armor it's just ridiculously high amounts here and once you get to the side here as all these crazy angles to start increasing the armor protection substantially so you're looking at over 500 millimeters of effective thickness here 500 here and even more so here because the impact angle is significantly higher uh, so you're going to need a heck of a of a powerful round just to shoot through this and even the lower glacis plate at 133.35 millimeters which is penetratable by a panzer IV at a flat angle is still near 300 millimeters of effective thickness the gun mantlet which is a little bit thinner than the rest of the tank and that is a relative term because it's still nearly 300 millimeters of armor does have a higher angle than the rest of the flat face here so that is arguably more difficult to penetrate through and it has a massive cannon breach behind it which would protect the crew so as you see here it's just a completely well armored shell and it's just insane how how they uh how heavily armored this thing is really the main point to shoot at the uh at this tank will be the two couplers at the top and i will go over that in just a moment these are our key placements because the cannon breach is so large that you cannot really uh, move around the center and i'm pretty sure that's why they put these two couplers here so that each side of the tank will be able to kind of just get in here uh, with relative ease rather than having to try to crunch their body between this ridiculous cannon breach and that does act as a weak point because that cannon breach will protect both sides shooting these two cupolas should allow you to destroy the two sides here but i'll get into that again in just a moment the side armor is fairly decent as well so even though this shows 101.6 millimeters there is a, another plate right here at 50.8 which equals the 152 uh, millimeters of armor on the side that you see there and the thing that makes this kind of special is that it is spaced armor and also has tracks to also protect you so really it's it's probably over 200 millimeters of armor and it's spaced uh, just because of how ridiculously well armored again this thing is much more so than even the t28 and i'll get into that in just a moment these are relatively low armor but they are at a high angle and will have a higher chance of uh bouncing a shell ricocheting a shell as it were so these are kind of tough shots to make if you do have the armor pen definitely try to shoot through this but again i'll get into that in just a moment and the rear of the tank is relatively weak but there is a lot blocking it from the crew you might be able to do uh to take down this tank like that by disabling it and then kind of going for more uh vulnerable shots at the cupola or even the side if you do have the penetration for that uh so that is your tactic that you'll want to use against this destroy the treads destroy its its capability to move because it's already a terrible traverser so to speak it does not pivot well and if you can do that then it is a sitting duck for light or medium tanks and even some of the faster heavy tanks so that being said, let's get into a proper protection analysis here. And this thing is all but invulnerable to almost every World War II tank in this game from the front, except for one key area. So I'll show you this. As you can see here, it's just completely uh, against a 256 millimeter protection shell. Uh, it's just completely invulnerable, it looks like, from everything, including on the lower glacis, 
looks like it. You can try to shoot this uh, machine gun port, but it is still the same armor protection as the rest of the front, so good luck doing that. You might see that it is a shot through the middle there, and if for whatever reason you get the luckiest shot in the world from a range, you will only destroy the barrel and the cannon breach. That's it. The cannon breach, as I said before, is ridiculously massive and just will protect the crew, as I'll show you here. This will go in, destroy, harm or destroy uh, two members of the crew, depending on the angle that you shoot. And it should kind of protect the rest of the crew. Not this guy so much because the shell goes into the back and then explodes where the, uh, where the um, cannon breach is a little bit thinner. But the, uh, he still remains alive as well as the driver. And then if you have clue reprint crew replenishment, you will now still have three quarters of your crew left, which is remarkable. Uh, you can take some side shots at it, which are possible. Uh, again, this is a really heavily armored piece of uh, material here. And one thing that you will encounter is that if you do get a side shot, unless you get an ammo rack, that, uh, that cannon breach will likely protect the tank crew members pretty well. But there is one spot that most people do not know, and I'll show you this right now. So between these two hooks... And also below basically the center of the gun and the upper glacis is kind of a notch in the armor. So it's the same exact armor thickness as the rest of the lower glacis, but it is at a different angle. And I'll show you this right now. So as you can see, just shooting through it with a really just a random shot destroys a large part of the crew. And if you manage to hit a lucky enough shot, you can actually ammo rack it from this. So let's just look at the armor analysis here. And as you can see here, it's about 63 degrees impact angle, depending on where you shoot, 63. You know, if you do shoot the top, it is a little bit easier to shoot through, but that's like on the top few pixels. But if you shoot this magic keyhole here, it goes from 63 degrees to 40, or really just depending on where you, you try to hit it. And that decreases its effective thickness substantially. So if you are able to shoot through it, you will have a good time doing so. And you could just look at it, for example, uh, with a common foe that it might face in the Panther 2, or not the Panther 2, my apologies, in the King Tiger. I'll just go with the uh, King Tiger 2H, uh, not the 10.5 because the 2H is still available in the main tech tree. You can just shoot through this with a regular round at 500 meters and destroy the entire crew. So that being said, explosive filler will be your friend in this case. Whereas the rest of the tank is still very difficult to shoot through. The cupola is an easier shot to make and will more likely than not kill at least one crew member depending on the angle that you shoot. But it is a difficult shot uh, to really just hit consistently in that or not hit consistently, but actually damage the tank consistently because it's just, again, kind of a shot that glances over the top and it might even penetrate the other side of the cupola depending on where you hit. So you're going to want to hit close to the bottom of the cupola and try to hit it at an angle so that it just goes into the tank and then blows up inside of the tank, possibly destroying other components or weakening them. Uh, there is a possibility where you could shoot through the center of the tank here, and I'll show you that on the uh, Jagdpanzer, uh, let me just see here, on the JPZ-45, there is a possibility where you can shoot through the uh, middle of the tank here and just destroy the ammo breach, and that is something that you may want to do to disable it from being able to fire, but again, this is such a heavily armed uh, cannon breach where it's just it will protect the crew so even if you destroy that the rest of the crew will likely be alive uh, that gets into my next point you will want to shoot if possible uh, at this with certain types of ammo so that being said he fs and apds ammo being that those are actually more common around this br uh, i would say that they work best but if you have access to apf sds ammo it is strongly preferred Additionally, APCBC ammo uh, is actually decent against this tank, but you'll either need an unusually powerful gun, as in the Object 279, uh, to penetrate the majority of the front of this tank from a relatively close range, or you'll have to shoot the weak spot in the lower glacis. If you do not have a shot from the side, rear, or on the couplers, Hesh ammo is also usable, but only if you have a relatively high angle shot on the top of the tank, 
Uh, side shots are a bit more difficult just because of the unusual frontal profile uh, filled with tons of angles. As you can see here, it's just not going to be an easy shot to make uh, against this tank. So it is certainly possible to shoot through the side of it with Hesh or through the front, uh, but it is not going to be an easy shot. Uh, and most of the time it will bounce even with Hesh uh, because most ammo at this uh, at this BR is going to still be relatively uh, low powered Hesh ammo, like all these specialized things. So you could possibly shoot through maybe like the side of a cupola and then just go in, destroy two crew members. That might be better with Hesh ammo, but it's not a given. And again, really the weak points that you'll want to use on this tank are here in the, the lower part of it. And I'll show you right here. It, it doesn't really uh, affect, it doesn't really matter as much with heat FS ammo, but if you shoot there, uh, you should be able to get through it, maybe even destroy an ammo uh, and maybe be able to ammo rack it. You can shoot here. If you do have higher pen ammo, you can destroy its cannon breach and also try to shoot the flat surfaces if you have heat FS, APDS, or uh, APF SDS ammo for whatever reason. And again, these side shots are doable, but they're not always going to be a given. I would always take these side shots rather than just go in front of the tank and try to hit it from the magic keyhole there. But hey, I'm not really in control of what you do. You can do whatever you want. And just switching over to the T28, you will uh, be able to more or less get about the same shots off on it. The whole front is about the same. It does still have that keyhole right here that you will be able to shoot through and just annihilate the, the uh, internal crew. And it does have a weaker side. So as I mentioned before, it does not have the benefit of that external armor uh, that the uh, T95 has. So it does have just a much weaker side and it's much more easily penetratable. So again, you'll want to use high penetrating ammo but if you are accurate and you feel like you have a good shot on it, always aim between these two hooks and also just below the top of the lower glacis and you may be able to hit that keyhole and just absolutely annihilate any T95 or T28 that you come across if you do not have the side shot or do not destroy their treads or engine. Either way, tell me what you guys think. Uh, you know, these, these should <laughs> put terror into most of the T28s and T95s out there. And if I could just help you destroy at least a few more of those tanks, I would be very happy. Remember, please like, comment, subscribe. But that being said, not saying good night, just saying. Hope you guys have a great day, a great night, or great whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, everyone.